One. Thirty-two thousand five hundred. There you are, Cantwell. And I must say, I'm relieved to be rid of it. It's more than I'm used to carry. Payroll and allotments for six months. Mounts up surprisingly. Even for a small post. Oh, uh, I didn't mean anything derogatory. I've heard you plan to retire. Any day. As soon as they send my replacement, I'll be done with the army. All of it, for good. All I want is to walk out of here and never see another uniform again as long as I live. Sorry you feel like that, Cantwell. I don't think it does you much credit. Well, I don't care what you think, Colonel. Your receipt. Anyway, good luck. Visitor, I'm always glad to see. Oh, it must have been the paymaster, huh? You been in the army? Oh, yes. Is Major Cantwell in his offices? As far as I know. Good. Hey, what did he do? Murder a general? Just drunk and disorderly, but repeat his offenses. Not the usual punishment here for that? No, but he's an unusual case. He's Major Cantwell's own orderly, and he took advantage of it. Anyway, I guess the Major had to make an example of him. Oh, Fever. Cattle delivered? You'll uh, want your pay. It can wait. It is in case you was coming out to release this man. He can wait a lot longer out in this weather than he can. Were you ever in the army, Mr. Favor? Oh, yeah, but I've never seen nothing like this. Your sympathies are wasted on that man. But his time's up, so I can oblige you. Sergeant, cut him loose. Caster, turn all army property into quartermaster and get out. Thanks. Colonel.
Come in, Faber. Drink, Mr. Faber? No, no thanks. I thought all cowmen rushed for a drink. I'm staying off the trail. I'll just take the money, thanks. Of course, you'll uh, want to get back to your cows. All right. Think a fort can be run without discipline, Mr. Faber? Can you uh, run your trail crew without it? There is a bit of difference between discipline and brutality. Oh, is there? What's brutal to one may not be to another. There. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's right. Well, see you next year, I guess. I think not. You'll have to deal with someone else next year. I won't be here. Oh, well, transfer? Retirement. Don't say you didn't know I was that old. Oh, well, that was one thing that surprised me. I didn't realize you was a colonel. Well, that fellow out there did call you colonel, didn't he? Are you trying to insult me, Faber? Just curious. Why should that insult you? Or it's none of your business. Didn't mean to offend. Now, don't apologize. Just get out. Go have your drink at the sutler's. Leave me to mine. Ask him right now. Uh, Mr. Favor, your uh, men tell me your boss and the trail herds are. That's right. My name's Castor. I wondered if you might need a hand at the railroad. Oh, uh, sorry, fella. I'm full up right now. Uh, no way for me to work a ride just to the next town. About my. Uh, being tied to that wheel in there. I can explain about that. I'm not asking for no explanations. Yeah, but maybe I owe one, seeing I'm asking to join you. Seems I was a little too familiar with the bottle. Yeah, I heard. I get bored out here. Nothing to do, no place to go. I can believe that. Yeah. Well, being his own orderly, maybe I asked for it. I took advantage, even though I knew the kind of man he was. Stickler for the rule. Anyway, he threw the book at me. Mr. Faber, that's a long walk to that railroad. Oh, well, sure, we can save you the shoe leather anyways. I'll buy you a drink? Why not try some of ours? That is, unless you swore off. Oh, Faber. Can I see you for a moment, please? Outside. There's uh, something I'd like you to do for me, if you will. If I can, well, what is it? Just uh, drop this package in the mail at the nearest post office you touch. Thanks, 
place we'll be hitting is Junction City. You'd do a lot better with regular army mail. Well, no, no, not now. Uh, that went out with the paymaster today. Stupidly, I forgot to put this in. Anyway, time is not the important thing. It's personal, not army business. You'll see I've addressed it to myself, care of Postmaster Tucson. Well, it's no trouble to me if you're not worried about time. Uh, just keep it uh, uh, secure and confidential. I mean, it's personal papers of considerable value to me. I wouldn't want it lost. Well, the best I could do is keep it with me in my saddlebags, all right? Uh, yes, thanks. Well, uh, bye, Peter. Good luck. He didn't talk you out of letting me ride with you. No, I didn't even mention you. Good thing, too. You and him come blows, I bet. Say, what's this um, colonel business all about, huh? You haven't heard the story? It's not important. Buy you that one for the trail? Good enough. Call. I brought your sword. Oh, put it there. Yes, sir. What's that? It's a buckboard, sir. It's an officer. Good to see you, sir. Remember me? Whaley. I was with Cushing in the 23rd. Uh, captain already? Motion wasn't so fast or easy in my day. Well, what brings you way out here, Captain? Assignment, sir. I'm your replacement. You're... You're replacing me? Yes, sir. I know I wasn't expected. The fact is, I'm carrying my own orders with me. And the replacement won't take effect until retreat tomorrow. But I didn't know how long it would take me to get here. They're replacing me with a young green captain up from the ranks. <laughs> I'm hardly green, sir. I suppose the activity at this fort has diminished somewhat. They know how to insult a man. I'm sure there was no such intention. There's certainly no such feeling on my part. No, of course not. Well, so be it. I relieved I can retire, be done with it. To retreat tomorrow, I say. Excellent. I'll, uh, I'll be ready. Well, well, Colonel, I have news for you. What did you call me? Colonel, that's the news I have for you. It's all in these dispatches I brought. It's also common knowledge around Fort Leavenworth. And I must say, everybody's delighted. What are you talking about? You, sir? They held another court of inquiry. How dare you pry into that? Sir, you don't understand. It's all in these dispatches I brought. They reversed their previous decision. They've vindicated you completely. And they've restored you to your proper rank of full colonel. Not only that, but maybe you better read it for yourself. Proceed directly to the city of Washington, D.C., where... Yes, sir. You're to get a congressional citation for a distinguished career, promotion to brigadier general, and retirement at full pay and requisites. And I must say, sir, it's richly deserved. The whole service is pleased. Colonel, sir.
But uh, Drover Faber, is he gone? Yes, sir, over an hour ago. Do you know where they're camped for the night? He didn't say, sir, but probably over by Chalk Springs. That's the nearest water on the trail. I want a horse saddled right away. But, sir, it's almost time for a tree call. That's an order, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, beg your pardon, sir. Would you please check this duty list for me? I haven't time now, Lieutenant. But, sir, it has to be read or a tree. Lieutenant, what is the first requirement of an officer? I, I... Command! The ability to take responsibility. Now, in your judgment, is that list correct? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Well, then, read it or retreat. If you made a mistake, suffer the consequences. That's why they made you an officer. Yes, sir. What are you doing here, Whaley? Why, nothing, sir. I was... Just looking around. Uh, I didn't think you'd mind. According to your orders, Captain, you will not take over here until retreat tomorrow. At that time, I will turn over to you all post records and monies, as well as this office. Until then, this is my private office. I will thank you to stay out of it. I beg your pardon. I meant no discourtesy. Though I can hardly see how I've offended you. But let's say you didn't. Let's see you don't, if you please. Anything you say, Colonel. Ah, you're the man I want to know. Why does it smell like I haven't had such food in a month of Sundays? <laughs> just a couple of clods that was too tough for the stew. Now, just don't ask me to mind my manners. I'm a man starved for good eating. <laughs> Come on over and meet the rest of the crew, Captain. Who's he? I'm just a drummed out dog robber, saving shoe leather to the railroad. The man, meet Castor. He's riding with us. Hello. Oh, how are you? Hello. Good to Dismiss the troops. Attend, shut. This, miss. Congratulations. What? Colonel, sir. I wonder if you'd mind stepping over to the men's mess hall for a moment, please. Not now, Sergeant. Whatever it is, you'll have to attend to it yourself. But I'm afraid I can't. This is something you'll just have to see for yourself. I told you, Sergeant, I'm busy. I can't be bothered. But, Colonel, please. Sergeant, do I have to order you? No, sir. Oh, uh, wait. Do you say it's important? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? I can't tell you, sir, if you'll just come with me. Busted. Some run in with the brass. Just as he was about to make general. When it comes to soldiering, or drinking, there's none better. It sure is nice and big of you to stick up for him after what he'd done to you. Well, like I told Mr. Favor, maybe I had it coming. I was a little uh, too fond of his liquor. And if it'd go good right now. Well, you're out of luck here. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, this that's what was in the package he gave your boss. Oh, I didn't know he gave you a package, boss. Oh, he's probably saving it for the trail. For snake bites, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. All right, that's enough coffee. Anybody on night guard with Roddy? Let's get to it.
of sugar. It's around someplace. Did you get a bedroll? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'll get one. Well, good night. Good night. Oh, I want to congratulate you, sir. Yes, Very nice. Thank you. Sir, quite a celebration. I only hope when I leave the post, they feel the same way about me. I think they like me, Whaley. No mistake. They love me. I don't believe that. They showed their respect tonight. Any cause would serve for a celebration? Oh, no, sir. It's not every day to have a man promoted to brigadier. That's a great honor. Is it? I never realized before what a fragile thing that is. Even now, uh, one slip, one mistake, they'd all be delighted to help kick me back down the ladder. They'd like nothing better than to see me broken again. Even now. Including you. Just have plenty of coffee when that guard changes. Yeah, just put on a new pot. You know, I swear it's gonna snow. But it could have done. Yeah, this late in the year, too. Mm. Well, what are you doing out here this time of night, Major? I uh, want a word with you, Favor. If you don't mind. I'd like that package back. I've changed my mind about sending it. Why not? It's yours. Over in my saddlebags. It's gone. I don't understand it, but. So it is. No. 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 Now, no. Steve. Take it easy, old man. No. Steve. Trace. Favor. If you say thief once more. Oh, I lost my temper. Uh, it ain't in here, Mr. No right Favor. to accuse you. It's just that it is valuable to me. But you didn't ask for the responsibility. You guaranteed nothing. I'm sure you did your best. But it's gone from my saddlebags. Well, I'll just have to find it. All right, keep looking, everybody. I just don't get it. I know all my men can be trusted. Of course. Well, I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, we'll turn it up. If it's only a bottle of whiskey like that Castor fella said, what's the problem? Castor? Was he here? Uh, he was riding with us to the railroad. And he was real interested in that package. I told you it was confidential. He saw you give it to me at the Sutler's. Where is Castor? Well, I just seen him leave a while ago. I have to be headed toward Junction City and the railroad. You know this train very well? No, he was attached to headquarters. He never rode patrol. Can't get very far in this dark anyways. We'll get after him just before sunup. I'm going now. I might be able to catch him before dawn. Major? 
Look, it's just too tough trying to track him at night. We'd probably lose his trail. Mr. Favor, time is important. I have to have that package. It's vital to me. All right, all right. I'll, I'll send a couple of the men with you. Well, you've done enough already. It's not your problem. Take over. Exactly. Yeah, I thought so. Package really worth all this. I'd think it was clear by now. Oh, what's in it so almighty important? I told you, personal papers. I want to get back to your herd, I suppose. Uh, I'll have to pretty soon. I can understand that. Besides, I'm afraid we've lost him good. Best thing for you to do, maybe, is to go to Junction City and see the marshal. No marshals. And get some help from the fort. No army either. I told you this is a private matter. All right. Have it your way. I'm afraid I've helped all I can. Favor. How do I know for sure Castor has that package at all? Look, I told... It could all be a blind. You could be walking away with my package. Good. Well, I... You better stay right with me until the package is in my hands. You think that thing's going to change my mind? You're wrong. Besides, I think you've got better sense than to use it. That package isn't back at the fort by retreat. You're going to be in very serious trouble. I am? Yes. All right, let's have it. What's in the package? You saw it yesterday. Oh, yeah, the money. $30,000. Of course. You retire, leave for parts unknown before the money's missed. Pick it up in Tucson, skip across the border to Mexico before they can trace you. Very nice. Is that what happened before, when they demoted you to major? Those charges were false. But they did demote you. I couldn't disprove them, but I was innocent. And this time? Everyone thought me a thief. Why shouldn't I be one? But, uh, now you want the money back? To put it where it belongs. The custody of the Commandant. Now oh, come, what changed your mind? It's enough for you to know. If that money isn't back in the box by retreat, the loss will be discovered. I don't intend to take the blame. I can tell them you saw the money when I paid you. And when I left the room for a moment. And they almost made you a general. Well, you go on and accuse me. I don't think you can make it stick. Anyways, I'll take that chance. Favor, I'm warning you. Stop. Go ahead, old man. You'll have to shoot me in the back.
Chester. Go get him. Oh, never mind me. Get Chester. Oh, take it. Here, let me. Easy. Uh, uh, don't you understand? He's getting away. No, he ain't. He went into that box canyon. The only way for him to get out is past us. We just have to wait for him. You're sure? I'm sure. Now lie back. Take it easy. We can't just sit here and wait. We've only got to retreat tonight. Let's go in. You're not going nowhere except back to the post and the doctor. You fix it. I can't do enough. But it'll have to be enough. We're going to the post. Not without that money, Fever. Do you understand that? Not without the money. If you're going to be that stupid, I don't have to be a part of it, Colonel. General. Of course not. How you feel? Sure, he's still in there. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get you to a doctor. Not without the money. We waited too long already. I've never pleaded with anybody in my life. I'm pleading with you now. Pleading for my life. That's what I'm thinking of. Not, not that life. shoulder. Brigadier General Stars. You know when I bought those favor? The day I graduated from the point. I swore I'd never rest until I could wear them. I came close. War hero. Eagle Colonel. Desk job in Washington. So close. And the charge. Regularity of records, they call them. Completely false. I couldn't defend myself. Quick court martial. Demotion. all over in my career as a major. No honor, no worldly goods, nothing but disgrace. And yesterday, exoneration, promotion. My whole life, the army. Literally. West Point, Mexican War, war between the states. I was a southerner, stayed with the Union. Lost everything. Even my wife, children. Never saw them again. Except the army, 
life of service with honor. That's why I had favor. I've got to get that money back. You're dying. It's my life. You think Castor's just gonna hand the money back? I've got the power to arrest him. Take him back to the fort? Do you think you can put that money back then and nobody the wiser? I'll put it back. Do everything I can to make it right. Well, I guess there's nothing for it, but I go in and get him. Think you can handle this if he flushes past me? Yes. Fella, all you got to do is give back the money and, and you can go free. You think I'd fall for that? I'm not stupid. I know where Cantwell got that money, so he can't let me walk away alive. Yes, he can. I'll see to it he can. You got my word on it. <laughs> Your word? Keep out of this favor. It's none of your concern. Afraid I'm already in it. Don't shoot. Uh, 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 don't move. I was going to bring your horse back to you. Well, that, um... Package, I thought it was booze when I took it. All right. Just give me the money and you can go. Well, now how do I know I can trust you two? After you get your hands on all that money. I'm telling you, it's going back to the fort. <laughs> Cantwell's gonna take it back? You expect me to believe that? Uh, I'd rather burn it. You got it in that bad for him, huh? Let's just say it's my way of tying him to the wheel. Look, apparently neither one of us meant to be out here. All I want to do is sell my cattle. All you wanted was a drink. But we are here, so let's get out of it the best way possible, huh? If you try and take me back, I'm going to see you and Cantwell both in Leavenworth with me. I told you, you'll be able to go free. I have to get out of the saddlebag.
back to the fort. Relieve your man, driver. Mr. Favor. Never mind. Go ahead, get the doctor. Sergeant, Sergeant. Retreat. It's right, Dawson. Go on, get the doctor. I'll take him inside. Retreat, Robin. Retreat, Robin. Retreat, Robin. Retreat, Robin. Retreat, Robin. Retreat, Get you to bed. Oh, wait. Souvenir. You stars. Why? I couldn't accept the honor, no. You gonna tell him? I've always paid for my mistakes. I will this time. No. Those records. We're keeping them. Is that doctor? He's right here, sir. What is it? Gunshot wound in the middle. He's in pretty bad shape. Major. Out of the way. Sir. Records, monies, all in order. He's dead. Strange, lonely man, Cantwell. A good soldier, though. Strict, tough, hard sometimes. Not always right, perhaps. Well, maybe not. But if he made mistakes, I guess he's paid for them. Melka, see you next year.
train inside yet. I'm glad. I don't think I could stand the wet noise. There's been something wrong with that whiskey they serve back in town. I never heard a three-day hangover before. Well, I got one. Anyway, we might be better off, Mr. Favor ain't in on that train. I'm beginning to think maybe he got held up in Philadelphia by something or another. Always said Mr. Favor's one trail boss with brains. Is that what you always said? Maybe he decided to stay in Philadelphia. Now nah, he gotta, he gotta come out here. He's gotta get the cattle money. Back to the ranchers in San Antonio. About money, uh, Rowdy. I, I know what I did with all my money, and uh, I know what happened to Joe's. What did you do with yours? Uh, yeah. See, I had a few drinks, and then I got in that car game at the Bon Ton Saloon. There's where my horse went. Mine, too. Uh, yeah, that's right. You were there, weren't you? That sure was a good horse you used to have. Well, it was before I met the girl from Glen Falls, New York. I don't remember hearing about an old girl from Glen Falls, New York. You know, that's funny. I've been thinking about her. I have a feeling Glen Falls never heard of her either. Glen Falls, New York is a long way from the city of Missouri. I guess the train there kind of cleaned you up, huh? I hope Mr. Faith's on this train. You know what's a funny thing? There ain't a drover born that don't draw every other breath on the trailer best in the day to become one. You take him off the trail now. I'm hungry. Well, now that's what I mean. You're pushing cattle north. There ain't no whiskey to drink. There ain't no pretty girls to look at. There's nothing but bees and dust. Sure do get fed, Wiggers. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of hungry. We thought being you had the chuck wagon here. Well, are you planning on eating it? Because I'm planning on eating the saddles and all that gear. It's all we got in there. I wonder what it's going to taste like. You, you mean you don't have any food in the wagon at all? I'm lucky I got the wagon. Almost afraid to ask. Oh, I ain't ashamed to tell you. It was a couple, three nights ago, I wandered into one of those saloons in town. Oh, purely by accident, I was looking for a glass of milk. Anyway, I don't remember much, but there was this woman who'd originally come from Glen Falls, New York. Oh. Both horses wish. Well, she was ailing pretty bad. Sure is a beautiful looking train. You bet. It has Mr. Favor aboard. Well, if Mr. Favor is bored, we don't want to bother him with our troubles, do we? No, 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 sir. I'm pretty tired traveling all that way from Philadelphia. Pleasure to see you, boss. Uh, we got the rest of your stuff on the truck wagon. It was good to see you. Good to see you. You're looking great. Real great. So all of you. Matter of fact, I 
I've seen you look like you look. Yeah, that's better. Hey, how come so many of you down here? I thought you'd still be busy in town. Well, we kind of finished up our business in there. Yeah, yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Say, I hope one of you remember bringing an extra horse along for me. Oh, I forgot. Of course, I can ride into town in the chuck wagon. Can't I? You sure can, boss. You can ride anywhere the chuck wagon's going. Only thing is, it ain't going anywhere. I would have gladly brought you along a horse, boss, but I seem to have one either. Us neither. How are you ever expecting to get to San Antonio? You're going to hire us all again, eh? Well, I was thinking about it. Well, it's, you know, we can pick up horses in this country. That's easy. No trouble getting rid of one either, especially in this part of the country, huh? I don't see how you could think. You're right, boss. It is easy to get rid of them. Every one of them? Boss, don't ask any questions. We wouldn't want to lie to you, and. You wouldn't want to hear the truth. Fair enough. That leaves five of us on foot in the middle of Missouri. Hey, well, well, you're going to hire us on again. You could advance us some money. We'd go back into town and buy them back. The only money I got is from the sale of the herd. Never any of that's got to get to the owners in San Antonio. I don't even have enough money to buy a horse myself. You too? I mean, Glen Falls, New York isn't that far from Philip. Forget I said anything. Well, it's going to be a long walk back to Texas. And we ain't used to walking. I don't mind the walk so much, but who's going to haul the chuck wagon? That's easy. The chuck wagon stays here. Oh, no. I lost my money and I lost both my horses, but one thing I ain't going to lose is that chuck wagon. I was dreaming. I see what you mean. Them ain't gophers. Those are horses. Horses? Oh, yeah, horses. Must be 40 or 50 of them. Must be. We only need six. That's all we'd need. Maybe we could buy six or so. Without any money? Well, there's more than one way of getting a horse. Scarlet, here you go. Hello, boss. Now, wait a minute. Boss, we need horses. Talking won't get you any. I ain't gonna let him do it. I guess he's doing it for us. Well, I know that. You can't stop him once he's made up his mind. Well, that'd be in the case. The least we can do is help him. Nice lot of us you got there. They ain't bad. I mean, 48. They all in good shape? They sure are. We'll uh, take those horses now. And don't give us any trouble. We've been drinking all hey. hey, Ain't you forgetting something? Well, there were supposed to be 50 horses, but only 48 were delivered. 
Keep your hands right where they are. Don't make a move, either of you. I'll take some money along with the horses. Well, a horse deal is one thing. Sure, we can use the money, but taking it off the same jackers we take the horses off of don't seem right. I'll decide what's right. Save the money. Sure. If you don't mind, Mr. Favor, we have rather a tight schedule. We'll be moving along now. All right, get moving, both of you. We, Scarlet, come up here and help unload these horses. Just let them leave like that. They'll be back in no time with our men. Why? Because you didn't have your face covered, that's why. That's what they always do, isn't it? Come back with armed men? What for? Oh, boy, you've been in Philadelphia too long. You're out here now. All you got to do out here is whistle and you got a posse, and this time with railroad bulls. Just could bought some horses? Bought? What? I know you were kidding all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No. Oh. Well, I sure am relieved to know that you're not a horse thief or a train robber. For a while there, I thought I was. Well, I'm glad to know if I ever want to steal a horse or rob a train, you're behind me. Oh, I bought 50 horses. They only came up with 48. That's the reason the conductor had some money for me. Now, let's get that truck wagon into town and get some supplies, uh, if we need any. Well, it isn't that I need them, but my stomach sure does. Here's my horse, and your horse is too, Wishbone. My team? Oh, where'd they come from? Well, let's quit standing around and get them watered. How do your horse here? How did you know we were going to need horses? A lot cheaper in Sevilla than San Antonio. More in demand on there. And here is yours, Mr. Ever. Why, yeah. It's my horse. Ah, oh, so that's how you knew, huh? That's how I knew. Well, those horses, that Lucinda, she was a busy girl. Huh? Lucinda, that's a girl I knew.
you're doing. Those are dick towels. They don't grow on trees. I've been thinking. You didn't offer to mention it. Where the heck's Pete? I don't know. Well, he went to Philadelphia with you, didn't he? <laughs> Last time I saw Pete, he said he'd never scout for me again. Well, that's bad news. He's a fairly good scout. And he is. What are you going to use for a scout when we start up north from San Antonio again? Pete, of course. One of these days you're going to say something like that and it isn't going to come true. So you ain't casting no shadow. A full grown American citizen, I catch just as big a shadow as anybody else. Sometimes a little shorter. I'm talking about Mushy. Oh, him. Well, he's up to Orangeville. We'll be passing by there tomorrow. Why Orangeville? Uh, he heard about a school teacher up there. I thought he'd about time he learned to read. Yeah, that's good. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm thinking about the teacher. If he wasn't a drinking man before Mushy come along, I'll be his now. Hey, something's bothering those horses. You just gotta go look after him. It's been hot enough for you. Uh, gonna stop in Orangeville tomorrow? I don't think so. Somebody ought to rescue that teacher from Mushy. Why? You miss Mushy? You must be out of your mind. Oh, why would I miss that overgrown, brainless... Yeah, kind of do. Just some straight, we tied him up. Yeah, he was just lost in Hey, why not you go into town, pick the stray, give him the sheriff, pick up Mushy at the same time? All right. stock. Who's boss of this outfit? Be me. My name's Wilson, Sheriff of Warrensville. Hi, my name's Favor. Get your horse. Why? You come with us. He's done, Chandler. Hey, hold on a minute. What's this all about? You're under arrest. Charge his horse, Stu. Well, I got a bill of sale for every one of those horses. Including that black horse with the three white stockings? Uh, well, no, but he's a stray. That's the only one you're accused of stealing. Mr. Faber didn't steal that horse. Look, he just wandered into our camp. The only reason we tied that horse up was bothering ours. You'll have your chance to testify. There'll be a hearing. Go ahead, Chandler. Take his gun. Let him get away with this? I ain't gonna run with a man holding a gun on me. Look, you might as well all stay here until I... Then when's the hen gonna be? Pretty quick. We don't waste too much time on horse thieves. Did you try taking off your badge and saying that, huh? Let's move out. You hold it till I get back. I'll hold it. Tell him we got his horse. All right, Sheriff. Hello, Clara. Sir. What are you doing here? Well, I knew you were going to arrest someone. I just wanted to make sure. I arrested my man. Will you empty your pockets, please? your blue dress. Yes. That all? That's it. What do you want to do with the car, Sheriff? Stabling in the barn with Cronin's. Look, I want that in a good, safe place. It will be. 
It's uh, Cronin, the man who reported his horse stolen? Right. When? Last night. And how come you came to us first thing this morning? Chandler's brought in, and he's a good tracker. Look, I'm a trail boss. My papers will show that. I just bought a herd of 48 horses. Now, why would I steal one? No idea. I pushed a herd of 3,000 head to Sydney. I'm taking the money from the sale back to the owners in San Antonio. Now, why would I take a chance on stealing one horse? I don't know, Mr. Favor. I don't know. Look, I'm not a judge. A horse was reported stolen. I found that horse in your possession. You'll have your chance to explain how it got there. You going home tonight, Tom? Depends on Cronin. If he don't show up, I'll stay here overnight. Hmm. Well, I have to get back to the house. Chickens have to be fed. Call back, then. Tom. Yes? Please be careful. Oh, well. the town. Well, a good strong wind is blow over. There, that jail. Yeah? Any small-sized boy could push it over without no trouble at all. Yeah, well, you'll probably have to. Let's go see how boss is. He can take care of himself. Yeah, he might want some company, though. Well, the best place to find out anything in town of this sort is the saloon. The best hand for it's the bartender. Rowdy. Yeah? Let's stay away from girls from Cliff Falls. Sure, long time I see you fellas. We ain't never been here before. Well, that explains it. <laughs> don't have much trade here in the afternoon. Well, tell the truth, don't have much trade at night either. Of course, the morning we're closed. Well, you uh, serve whiskey, though, don't you? I bet you mentioned that. Are you the owner of this place? Yep. The owner, the bartender, the cheap bustin. You name it, I'm him. Oh, dirt it. Same thing every day. Wrong key. Yeah, oh, whoa, hold it. Uh, Real nice town you got here. What town? This one, Ornsville. <laughs> you see, just a wide place in the road. It ain't even there anymore. But you got a jail, though. Yeah. Usually they don't have any more customers over there than they have in here. I guess it's uh, just a big day, both of us. Somebody in jail? Yeah, horsey. Uh, how do you know that? Oh, town as small as this. Anybody sneezes, everybody wipes their nose. Uh, whose horse was stolen? A fellow named Cronin. He's got a small spread out about four or five miles out of town. Uh, no way, fellas. I'll be right back. Stay sure I'm booming around here. Yeah? Well, what did we find out? We found out things sure are booming. Yeah, well, that ain't helping Mr. Favor now. We gotta wait for that fellow Cronin. We ain't heard much about him, though. He was too quick to call for law. Well, that horse came in there without saddle or bridle. We knew it straight. He should have known the same thing. Well, it might be a pleasure waiting for Krona when that owner, bartender, and chief customer gets back. <laughs> Supper. I'm staying in town myself tonight. As soon as Cronin gets here in the morning, you get your business over with. Well, I'm sure glad Mr. Cronin can spare the time in the morning. Well, this is a Aussie deal, you know. You can't do anything by hanging around here. Might as well get back to the camp. I'll leave you here? It seems like a nice, safe place to be. Well, uh, we'll stay here and keep you company. You got eating money? No. Well, the sheriff ain't gonna feed you. It won't hurt us to miss a few meals. Ain't no sense to it. I'll see you all in the morning. All right.
Chuck? Yes, sir. Any witnesses around now? Nothing you say'd be official. You really think I'm guilty of this charge? Jim Cullen made that charge. That didn't answer the question. I didn't mean it to. Hey, don't you ever look at a man you're talking to him? seen me before. I wish I never had. The name is James Cronin, ma'am. You've seen me before lots of times. You gotta keep right on seeing me. Jim. Not anymore, Jim. Not ever again. The wind must be blowing from the wrong direction. I've been trying to tell you for a long time. I don't, I don't want to see you anymore. I know. And not even before you did. Trouble with you and your good woman. You just lost your head for a while. It's your husband's fault, mostly. And being stubborn is a little stupid. We don't have to talk about Tom. Have you changed your mind? Well, I ain't changed mine. It's still you and me. No. Suit yourself. But what we plan still happens. Otherwise. I I can't. I just can't, Jim. You wouldn't want me to have a heart to heart talk with your husband now, would you? I never understood why anyone could kill before. Now I do. You're frightening me something terrible. Get out of my house. I'll do what you want. Sure you will. I'll drop by again. Can't even put that bottle on that hit trail. What are you gonna do with a gun now, Dorn? Get your horse and get out of here. Sure to bother, Sheriff. That's a job. One of these days, Tom, they're going to shoot back. You bring the food for the prisoner? Yes. And you. When are you going to give in? Realize you shouldn't be a sheriff? Take the food and die. Thank you. Hey, what was
was all shooting about? Nothing important. Here's your supper. Ah, it looks good. It is good. My wife's a fine cook. At least none of the prisoners were complained. Mmm, I can see why. Get ready for coffee, yell. I could use some light. Should have left the door open. Tom? Hmm? You're not coming in tonight? No. Oh. Who's staying? Then he's got a spare room over the saloon. I'll stay there. Would you mind if I stayed with you tonight? I'm... When you're not home, I get frightened. I... I just worry about you. May I? to run. I ain't pressed charges. What? Wait a minute. That ain't enough. I've been accused of horse stealing. There ain't no horse been stolen. You reported a stolen horse, Cronin. Miller, that's my fault, Sheriff. I kind of forgot about the busted log in the corral fence. I saw it, Sheriff. Told Miller he better own up to it. That's what he did. So this morning I told Mr. Cronin the horse strayed. Wasn't stolen at all. I guess, Mr. Favor, a trail boss is used to delays of one kind or another. Sorry. Let's go, boy. Otis, get Mr. Favor's gun. Mr. Fitter, bad about what happened. This envelope was sealed last night. You must rip that open. There was fifty thousand dollars in this envelope. If there was fifty thousand dollars in that envelope last night, there's fifty thousand dollars in there now. Well, look at it. Are you blind? Yes, Mr. Favor, I am. You said your wife was wearing a blue dress. Her dress is gingham. It smells a lot different than cotton or silk. It's newspaper, Mr. Wilson. Cut up into the shape of money. Then that's what was in there last night. Philadelphia newspaper. And you were in Philadelphia. And brought the newspaper back with me. And the money. And I'm the only man that knows the combination of that safe. But you know what that put you. Because I'm telling you there was money in that envelope. Are you calling me a thief? I'm saying that somebody is. But maybe you lost the money. Gambled it away. Maybe you think by accusing me you can get yourself out of trouble. Did I know I was going to be arrested to have things taken away from me so I could plan this thing? If there was money and it was stolen, then I'm the only one could have stolen it. Then you're the man that stole it. Man get himself shot saying that of Mr. Wilson. I'm going back to a camp. I'll give you time to get money together, but you better show up with it soon. Or we'll all be coming back into town. <laughs> Oh, I didn't take the money, Jim. You're a liar. No. We hung around long enough to find out the money's gone. I don't know anything about that. I just know I couldn't do what you asked. There was a time. Yes, there was, but not anymore. And you understand that I love my husband. 
So much you'd like to convince me that he stole the trail he boss's didn't. money. It ain't that room neither, Mr. Cronin. It's got to be. Were you planning on keeping it all for yourself? I was afraid you'd try taking it at the jail. You're not as smart as I thought. Would I have planned all this, starting with accusing the trail boss of stealing my horse if I'd wanted to grab and run? No. This way, it's either the sheriff or the trail boss. Nothing to do with Jim Cronin at all. Miller, saddle up a horse for Mrs. Wilson. She's coming with us. You've got the money now. Don't you leave me alone. Horses are real peaceful. Thanks, Bruce. No one's riding in with the money. Yeah, I know. You know that as well as I do, but you ain't doing nothing about it. Well, I do. Shoot over the blind man? Oh, but we could go in and take that town apart and get money that way. The town ain't got it. The town back in that sheriff. Sheriff didn't think I took the horse. I don't think he took the money. Why? Because he's blind? Because he couldn't have known I'd ever be in his jail. Oh, Mr. Favor, Mr. Quint, Mr. Yates, Mr. Whisper, Mr. Scarlet. You're not in school now. You don't need to be calling the roll. What? Just, uh. Harkness. I just. Harkness. Well, he must be right fond of you to tell you he's given me. Well, Harkness was my grandfather's name on the Mushgrove side. Uh, this is Miss Winkle. Miss Winkle, too, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, she, she's my school teacher. I'm very pleased to meet you. You're Mr. Favor, aren't you? Harkness told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. And you're Mr. Wishbone, of course. Who I am. Harkness told me a lot about you, too. Oh, I am a lot. Oh, I'm sure it is. Harkness told me he was the finest trail cook in the world. Oh, well, he's kind of the finest cook's lost. I don't think that's very nice. Well, there's a difference between plain, ordinary laws and a cook's laws. Harkness told me how proud he is to be your assistant. Yeah, that's what he is, my assistant. Uh, Miss Winkle and me was out picnicking. Miss Winkle and I, Harkness. Uh, uh, Harkness and I was, I mean, well, anyway, Mr. Favor, we just heard what happened in town. And I told Miss Winkle right away that you wouldn't be doing nothing but telling it to. Thanks, Mush uh, Mr. Mushrove. And uh, Miss Winkle said right away that Mr. Wilson wouldn't be lying either. Well, that doesn't help very much. I said Mr. Wilson. I didn't mention any other name. Who else might you have mentioned? If I were a gossip, Mrs. Wilson. I don't care much for gossips, Winkle. Well, neither do I. Of course, there are times. And this is one of those times. Mrs. Wilson almost left Mr. Wilson two or three times after he was blinded. But she didn't. If I were a gossip. Of course not, Miss Winkle. Orangeville is a small town. Anyone could tell you. Tell me what? The name of reason why Mrs. Wilson didn't go. Well, I'd appreciate your telling me. James Cronin. Yeah, Cronin would be the one who pinned the whole thing. You sure about this? Sure, I'm sure. And the only one in town who doesn't know about it is Mr. Wilson himself. Quint, saddle me a horse. I'm going with you. Oh, you don't need any help breaking up a man's life. Thanks, Mr. Whisper. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's no 
great mystery. I know where man's footsteps and touch. Look, Sheriff. I, I have to tell you something. Where to begin? It's about my wife. Go ahead. Yeah. It's not that easy, though. Maybe I can make it easier for you. You're a stranger in town. But you found out in one day what it's taken me months to find out. Except underneath, I really knew it all the time. After losing my sight, I spent a year learning. Learning how to see my ears. My hands, my nose. And then I thought I, I really wasn't blind. But I was wrong. Even if I got my eyes back, I'd have still been blind. But the one thing I didn't know, that she was a thief, too. You better come with me. for yourself. She's been searched, turned upside down. She would have known where the money was. Mr. Fever, there's one thing I need from you. I know the road between here and town, but I don't know the road between here and Cronin's ranch. Let's go. me to come with you. It's not going to do you any good. I didn't want to leave this part of the country. I like it here. Mr. Cronin, out there. Take her the blind tire up and keep her quiet. Let go! Let go of me! Stop it! Evening, Sheriff. Mr. Favor. Where's my wife? You ought to know better than me. I know as well as you. Well, then neither one of us knows a thing. We're searching a place. I don't think so. A light in the house. There's one in the bun up. A couple of Cronin's men are just coming out of the bar. Then that's where we start. You ain't starting nowhere, Sheriff. You're finished. If you've got nothing to hide in that barn. It's my bar. You're right! In that barn? Yeah. This will make us even.
And so you can say as much about what happened as you like, or as little. You got our money back. There's nothing more to be said. I have no way to repay you. The only thing I can do is tell you that I'm resigning as sheriff because it's better for town, I guess, because my wife wants it that way. Boys are ready to go, boss. Shh. Everything's not quite ready. Well, goodbye until next year. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? In front of everybody. Marcy! Marcy! Goodbye, Hopkins. You were a good student. Uh, goodbye, uh, thank you for books. Uh, you're a great teacher. We should take your father's sign, too. Well, it's a bigger dog if we leave it here. All right, go ahead. Simpson. Joe, you might have killed him. I uh, just put him back to sleep. That's all. He's getting a little restless. Get the money. All right, come on. What are we waiting for? New deposits? Maybe this was such a good idea. Sidney, are you going to let your father win out just because you're a little nervous? You know, he runs you like he runs this bank. Now, you got to get back at him. Well, I want to, but look, all I'm doing is reminding you of what you had in mind when you come to me. I don't need to be reminded. After all, we'll bring the money back in three days. Sure, Sidney. Sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wait here. I don't want the sheriff to drag me back to my father. No worrying about your father. Me, I'm worrying about jail. We didn't steal that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I keep forgetting. That nice. Now I can trade off old Sufoot here. What for? Need a horse, don't I? Cattle drive that size, hires plenty of drovers. Drovers ride horses. You're gonna steal a horse. Sydney, I'm gonna trade. Well, be about an hour or so before they break camp. That's when we uh, trade horses. Wish. Don't forget to save some breakfast for Rod. No, I missed him. Where is he? Sick something? Yeah, he's sick, all right. He loves it. Oh, not again. Yeah, again, we met when he went in to pick up flies at Ansley. You ought to heard the way the driver said she's half moonbeams and half music at twilight. A half breed? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, there must be something different about her. He never even missed seconds when he was mooning over that Cindy at Marsville. I don't think it's so much his appetite he's lost as uh, he doesn't care for our company for breakfast. The boys rode him a bit hard last night, a bit more than he could take. He'll get over it soon, though. Just don't mention Eloise around here. That's her name. <laughs> What do you think you were doing? Uh, picking up the pots and pans I dropped, Mr. Fishbone. And you were dreaming about something? Yeah, I guess I was. What? Uh, I was just thinking, uh, ain't nothing compares to the man falling in love. <sighs> it's a bunch of foolishness. A man falls in love and he gets deeper than one of those bees. I suppose so. Well, I know so. Not that I haven't had a couple mishaps myself. Like there's this woman in Waco. Pretty? Well, the sight of her made your knees turn to soup. And what a voice. So sweet it made you want to bottle it. You're going, Mr. Wishbone. Why haven't you washed those pans? Because I was here, standing here talking to you. Well, don't ever do it again. Now get those pans and wash them. Where? At the stream we crossed just before we made camp last night. I didn't know that, Mr. Wishbone. They say you can't take a horse water and make him drink, but you can sure take a cook's louse of water and make him walk. Come on. Come on. We've got enough time. Riding in it any minute. Somebody better. There ain't no horse in sight. What are you doing that for? You gotta eat, don't we? Here, hold this. Wishbone? 
Wishbone? Joe, did you have to do that? Well, we got ourselves a horse, Mom. I thought there wasn't going to be any trouble. There won't be if we get out of here. Well, you coming? What's the matter with you? That's my horse. Well, that's the way they'll be nice and clean. What happened here? It's all gone funny. Things just happened. Well, if you and me got a different sense of humor, you think this is funny. What's the idea of messing up my kitchen? I ain't been messing around your chuck wagon. Boy, so I did. Maybe it's a wind or something. Or some thieving drover. I ain't got nothing wrong to you. All I'm trying to tell you, somebody has. Now, don't worry about it. I'm not going to be sore when I catch him. I'm just going to cut his throat. Wishbone, all I did was ride in here, try to get me a Prince, go and find Mr. Favor and tell him this chuck wagon don't move one inch until I find out who's been stealing my supplies. Stop on it, Wishbone. Don't argue with me unless you don't want to eat again until we hit the railhead. Now go. Where's the cash box? Cash box? Yeah, the cash box, the one supposed to be here, the one that's got payroll in it. Well, I didn't think we had two. Well, every drover that's had a chance at that chuck wagon's right here, except one, that's Roddy. I sure don't think it'd be him. Well, the cash box sure isn't here. Well, whoever did it, right in the chuck wagon's one thing, still in the cash box, something else again. Whoever did it, going to jail. Search all the war bags. Boss, I wasn't going to say anything when I thought it was only the provisions for two. Well, Roddy was here. You see him right in? Well, I saw him right out and on my horse. That don't prove much. Senor boss, if Roddy needed money for a relative or something like that, he would have asked you for it. Unless uh, he needed for Eloise. He still would have asked me. Would you have given it to him? No. That's why I wouldn't ask you. I'm not saying that Roddy did it. But even if he did, he'll be back. Mr. Faber, that money was our pay. Tell you what, if he doesn't get back, I'll make it up out of my own pocket. Well, have you got the money in your pocket, or even enough to buy supplies with? Then you better wait until you miss a meal or payday before you start worrying. Well, it might be a little late by then, I reckon. I'll tell you what, you willing to put up some money? What for? I'm saying that Roddy will be back by payday with the money. I might get about five dollars on that. Can anybody else get in on that? Besides, well, I would bet on Roddy if there wasn't a girl mixed up in it. How much? About ten dollars. You got a bet. In the meantime, he may be having trouble. You better get mounted and try and find him. Thing you say, Senor Boss. Will you permit me the honor of taking half of your bet? I'm glad to see Rod got such a good friend. You're on, Asus. Anybody else willing to take a bet? For me, up two
<laughs> Sydney, you ever drink wine out of a bottle? My father doesn't approve of drinking. My father doesn't approve of anything, except piling one dollar on top of another. I guess he's having a fit right now. Wouldn't be surprised. Find out something can go wrong with his precious bank. No? Time we get to Fort Worth, I ain't gonna drink anything but wine out of a bottle. Fort Worth? We're not going there. We don't have time. We gotta get the money back to Kimberly in three days. We don't have to get that money back at all. Staff, I asked you to help me to play a joke on my father, to teach him a lesson. He's gonna get a bigger lesson than you figured on, that's all. I never had really stealing that money in mind. I never had anything else in mind. That money's going back to Kimberly. Now you can go back to Kimberly if you want. That money stays with me. I'm not a thief. All right, you're not a thief. But I am. You send me back empty-handed. I'll own up. I don't care what happens to me. Own up, huh? Sick the sheriff on me, huh, Sidney? I'd rather be dead. Just might be. want the cash box and my horse back. Cash box? What cash box? You know what cash box? The one you took off that chuck wagon. Look, I, I don't know nothing about no cash box. Took one of your horses, maybe, but give you a good price for him. That horse ain't for sale. Look, how long do you think you're gonna be able to stay there pinned down like you are? Long as you can. We're gonna see about that. There was a lot of tracks here, Sheriff. Go every which way. Yeah, I gotta keep trying. His horse. You know, where he's staked out, he won't be able to see the top of that bank. Sounds like it came from Yellow River Gulch. Thank you. 
up there. Joe Staff. He's dead. The body's still warm, though. Another one must be around here someplace. With the money, we'll spread out and get him. Strangers in town. It'll make that bank robber a lot harder to find. We find him. Random. Get out the south road and stay there. Nobody leaves town. Hanks, you and Gregory stay here. Don't display that money as I promised. I'll be the biggest laughing stock in the West. We know bank robbers in town someplace. Well, congratulations, Sheriff. But where's my money? Warned you to put additional night watchmen on. That wouldn't be necessary if we hadn't fish and sheriff. You may be president of this bank, Mr. Porter. But you don't hire me. No. But my investors do. Sydney. Mother? Well, where have you been? Keep pretty late hours, aren't you, Pa? I've been just up to uh, Paris, Paris County, visiting. Well, is anything wrong? Someone robbed your father's bank of $50,000. Fifty? Well, did you find the robbers? Yeah, one of them. Someone you know pretty well. Oh? Joe Staff. Joe! That's right. Well, I, I, I knew he was a little wild, but I never... Well, what do you have to say about it? Well, he was dead when we caught up to him. But there was someone else with him. Someone who helped him rob the bank and shot him afterwards. Well, I guess there's no honor among thieves. Do you, uh... Any idea where the other one might be? Yeah. 
He's in town. I'll let you know the minute anything happens. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Sheriff. What do you do in Paris County all the time, Sidney? I rob banks, Mother. It's no joking matter. I'm sorry, Pa. I forgot that banks were so safe. Don't speak to your father like that. He's done everything for you. I know. I don't want him to do everything for me. I don't want him to treat me like some half-witted child who hasn't got enough sense to keep himself from falling into a well. But your father's not free to do like that. No. Why'd he make me manager of the bank instead of Jepson? Or even head cashier. Pa doesn't think that I can add the fingers on my hand. I don't know where your talents lie, Sidney. You never exhibited them to my satisfaction. Well, why didn't you ever give me a chance? I could do a lot of things. Such as picking a friend like Joe Stapp? No, I... I was wrong about Joe. Well, that's typical of your judgment, I'm afraid. The worst element in town, the robber of my bank, the murderer of Mr. Simpson, if he dies from that blow on his head. That's the kind of man my son cultivates. Well, maybe since you know Joe Stapp so well, you also know who helped him. Maybe it's another friend of yours. I should have stayed in Paris County. Anyway, Albert Porter, I've been saying you're a fool for 35 years. And for 35 years, you've been proving me right. I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Do you think I enjoy being ashamed of my own son? I told you before, I don't want to have anything more to do with you. Well, well, I like it, I like it. But you get a little too touchy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. You're welcome, miss. That's a pretty nice night course, fella. The one way goat low. Groat. Low. Oh. Business? A pleasure, Sheriff. Business, Ted. Any strangers come in here recently? You got eyes. Go down and see for yourself. I'm the one at the bar. You better kiss me. Quick. 
We ain't hardly been introduced. Do like I say. That's enough. How do you know what's enough? Now, you keep a civil tongue in your head, Lily. Who are you? Oh, well, He's my cousin. Must be pretty fond of him. He's my kissing cousin. I've never seen him before. Oh, he's my cousin, not yours. How long have you been in town? Oh, well, since, since last week. Why ain't no one seen him around? Well, he's been sick. Tonight's his first night out. Where's he been staying, Lily? He's staying with me. Oh, my family's got strong family feelings. Yeah, that's right. I don't like strong family feelings, is there? What's your husband's name? Yancy. Uh, Yancy? Well, I never heard of a cowhand named Yancy. Yeah, well, that's... You're looking at one right now. That's my name. Yancy Yates. <laughs> if I had a name like that, I wouldn't let it get around. Yancy, you ain't looking so good. You better come with me and rest up and, until you get your strength back. Yeah, nice. Excuse me. For a sick man, he got the best right course I've seen. You didn't kill anybody or anything, did you, Yancey? Come on, man, Yancey. <laughs> no, it ain't. Yeah, I didn't kill anybody or anything. Well, I'm glad. It wouldn't have made any difference anyway, but I'm glad. That's good. What are you doing here? Waiting to meet your cousin. The city's like a brother to me. I'd rather be treated like a cousin. Sydney brother. Ruddy. Yeah. Ruddy Yates. It's a nice name. All right, Lily, get out of here. That is my room. Sure. Let me tell the sheriff that your cousin Yancey is really your cousin Rowdy. Well, there isn't going to be any trouble, is there? No, I don't think so. Well, I'll go watch the great dancing or something. Good. Say, you, uh, recognize my name? Oh, should I? My father's president of the bank here in town. Oh, must be real nice for you. No. No, it's not real nice for me. Look, we can help one another. How's that? You want to get out of Kimberley, don't you? Yeah? Well, you won't until the $50,000 is back in the bank. Oh. What's that got to do with me? You've got it. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, first time I've ever been accused of having more than $50 on me. I saw it on you. It's in the saddlebag. You're making up the story. Go ahead and finish it. I know the money's in the saddlebag because I put it there. And I know you've got it because I saw you right out of Yellow River Gulch with saddlebag on your horse, right? Who in that gulch? Look, wait, let me, let me tell you what happened. Joe Stapp and I took the money. Only, only I, I thought it was going to be a joke. I, I wanted to play a trick on my father. And Joe, he, Joe had different ideas. So you killed him? Well, no, no, I, I didn't mean to kill him. It was, it was an accident. He, he was getting ready to shoot you. See, so you expect me to believe that? We worked our way up to the top of the gulch. Joe had a perfect beat on you. I couldn't let him do it. Well, that wouldn't have been part of the joke. All I wanted was get the money back in that safe. And, and I can do it without, without anybody finding out, and then you can ride out of town. You won't have to own up to your part of the robbery, then. I never planned on it being a real robbery. What about killing your partner? Should I let him kill you? 
Look, uh, how do I know I can trust you? Well, I, I could have told the sheriff. Not without getting yourself involved, you could. Well, well that's right. I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll meet you tomorrow. Maybe with the money, maybe not. Well, where are you going now? <laughs> well, that'd be too easy. All right. Tomorrow morning, in front of the bank. At nine. At nine. Um, tell Lily I... I'll feed my horse. Expensive hay you're in. You work on this stack here. Excuse me, mister. You got time on it? Well, I've got a watch, if that's what you mean. Yeah, that's what I meant. What's 10.30? Thanks. Yeah. there. Oh. Well, I can explain this. You'd be surprised if you knew the kind of things people leave behind them when they come into the bank. I guess I sure would be surprised. Yeah. Well, you'd better take a saddlebag. Now, just suppose that that was full of money. How'd you feel then? Not the same way I feel right now, I guess. Thank you. Why aren't you eating? I'm pretty hungry. Are you sure Sidney Porter never eats in here? No, nope. not during the daytime, I told you. Excuse me, just a minute, will you? Good to see you. Do I know you? Look, I need your help. You don't need any help. Looks to me like you're doing all right. Well, I ain't doing all right. She might even be prettier than the one in Ensley, huh? Look, I'm in bad trouble. You gotta help me. You will be in bad trouble as soon as I finish this drink and drag you back to the hurt. And I'll lose my ten dollars because I bet you wouldn't be back by payday. To get ten dollars with you, I'll get ten dollars. I'm in trouble. I need your help. I just didn't think you'd get the money hungry. You know about the money. Of course I know about the money. I don't think you could steal a cash box and none of us know about it. Cash box? I'm not talking about the cash box. I'm talking about $50,000 taken from the bank here. Fifty. Shh. Let's go outside and I'll explain it all. 
Dear mister, I got a desire to apologize. First to the lady, and to you. Yeah, oh, thanks very much. Hey, mister. Your mistake was getting caught, son. <laughs> you admit it was a Jello River gulch with Joe Staff? Yeah, but... And when the sheriff and his men came up, you ran, didn't you? Well, yeah, that's true. Rode out of there with a saddlebag containing $50,000. Yeah, but... Uh... And when you got to Kimberley, the first thing you did was return the stolen money to the Kimberley and Southwest Bank? Oh, uh... No, I didn't, but I... As a matter of fact, you never did voluntarily return the bank funds. No, well, I was going to, but... You're on trial for murder, son. We're waiting to hear anything you got to say. Murder? Well, uh... I, uh, arranged to return the money to City Porter. The bank president's son? That's right. He helped rob the bank. It's a, a, a joke. Joe Stapp's killing a joke, too? Well, no, no. He killed Stapp to save my life. So he ain't too much interested in Joe Stapp. Did you return the money to Sidney Porter? Well, no. I, I was going to. But... Not even to the man who saved your life? I know it's hard to believe. It's impossible to believe, son. Gentlemen of the jury, is it necessary to retire in order to get at the verdict? It sure ain't. He's guilty. Look, I didn't murder them. We ain't much interested in Joe. Old man Simpson's the one who... Simpson? The night watchman you struck down in the course of robbery. He died last night. That's why you're gonna hang tomorrow morning. Who are you? I've been looking all over you, Sidney. I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk. I have nothing to talk about. Rowdy says you do. Rowdy. I just saw him at the jail. He says you got plenty to talk about. How did you know where I was? Well, again, the key. Lily. Lily, I told her I wanted to be alone. I had to attend some very important business. Mm-hmm. So notice. That's all I got left. No mother, no father, no guts. Well, what do you expect me to do, show up at the trial? It wouldn't have been necessary, Sidney, if you'd just met Rowdy this morning like you promised to. Poor old man Simpson. Died, I... Made it too dangerous to try to bring the money back. And now you're, you're willing to let Rowdy hang for something you did. I saved his life once. Even though it was by accident. I can't do it anymore. I just can't. Did 
Too much of a cop. I didn't admit anything to you. Didn't say anything. I am... I better leave. Why? Don't say a whole lot more. There's one thing more, Sid. You're the one that hit me. Where am I? This place you're gonna die. What is this, a joke? You're the one that makes the jokes, remember? Take a listen. What is it? It's a gallows they're building for Rowdy. They're gonna hang him at daylight, and that's when I'm gonna hang you. Of course, you probably won't die as soon as he does. Because I'm no expert at this. I got your gun right here. You forget it. It's getting light. I'm not a murderer. Neither is Roddy, but they're hanging him same as I am you. We'll just call it a life for life, huh? I'll give you anything. All right, how about Roddy's life? They finished. Get up! Please, come on. Let's see what I'm doing. All right, look out. I wonder if you'd reach for that. You, you mean you planted it deliberately? That's right. Why? Well, if you're going to get away with this, you're going to have to kill me, same as Rowdy. I didn't kill Rowdy. Not yet. Are you going to pull the trigger? No, no, I'm not murdering. I'm counting on that. Well, it's not going to be so hard from here on out, Cindy. Let's go tell the sheriff. All right. All right. You know, I feel kind of sorry for him. Oh, he'd get off easy. He's a pretty nice kid. Looks like you figured him just right. Well, I never figured you'd let him take that gun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I like you, Rowdy, but I don't like you that much. Stolen ten dollars, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought you'd be the one who'd bet against me. No, I'd trust you any time, Rowdy, except when you're palpitating over some female. Well, you saved my neck, or I ain't gonna hold against you. <laughs> That's right, I did. The ten. Oh, ten. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about it. Uh, you know, maybe I was thinking maybe I ought to borrow this ten back from you. What for? Well, you remember that girl back in Kimberly. Uh, you met her, Lily. Well, anyway. <laughs> Taking a herd north, you have to trill across nearly a thousand miles of the wrinkled skin of Earth. 
Over terrain as strange and different as paradise above from the hot place below. Mostly it's too rough or too steep, too wet or dry, too hot or cold, too windy, too lonely. But you take what comes and find a way to move the beeves on through. At least you try. My name's Gil Favor, Trail Boss. Fool Jasper's leaving that herd. He will never get through them, Elbe. Not that way. He lose half a beeves, maybe more. Senor, we better get a move on. In a minute, Joe. Wonder where he's from. Trail boss down there, not from his country. That is certain. Somebody ought to warn him. Uh, senor. Oh, it'll only be a few miles out of our way. But you do not know who they might be. You said it yourself. Would he from around here? But, senor, an hour lost. I'm just riding home. I'm not running away from anybody. If they want to catch me, let them come. Ground's awful. You sure we're on the right trail? You know a better one? I didn't say that. It's just the worst cattle country I've ever seen. We're getting through it just as quick as we can. Do your job. Stop complaining. Look, I'm only trying to point out that this Lavaronk is cutting our hooves something fierce. I know it only too well. You just let me do the worrying. Come on, get moving. Well, I don't know how much further this wagon's gonna go in this. Keep moving till I tell you to stop. What's eating him? Ain't any harder on him than it is the rest of us. Maybe he's tired, Mr. Wishbone. Meaning you and me ain't? I ain't a bit tired. Then you be the one to go down and check that hand ring. Go on. Well? We ought to be a way through. I wouldn't guarantee it. I get to tangle up that mile pie we never find a way out. I don't know. You don't know? Aren't you supposed to be scout? But I'm not going to take the responsibility. You won't take my advice. What's your advice? Go back to the main trail. We know we can get through there. Four days dry. We'll make it to the river in two days this way. Oh, uh, maybe. We might spend a lot more than four days dry on this stuff. I said we got to make it to the river in two days. You just find a way. That's all. What's the matter? Move out. You sick? What do you expect me to be doing? Singing and telling snappy jokes in a place like this? Well, no, I don't expect you to act like a hammer-headed coyote with a case of the colic, either. If you did your job. We're all doing our best, Mr. Favor. It's yours that brought us this way, so don't blame somebody else if it's too tough for you. Pete, listen to me. Favor. Honey, who are you? My name's Cord. John Cord? All right. This is my ramrod, Joe Sarah. Uh, this is Pete Nolan, my scout. Glad to meet you. You driving a herd near here? I took my herd up to Abilene earlier this year. I'm headed way back home. I wish we could have come this way earlier. Probably a lot easier. Must have been more water. More water, yes. I wouldn't say it was easier even then. Somebody told you to come through this way? No, why? Then can I ask why you're doing it? I figures to say two days to water. Your scout give you any argument on that? One that's got to decide the route. Maybe you got another way. I was surprised to find out you were bossing this herd. Why? I always heard you were a good cowman. Get some complaint against me? Yeah. You're killing good beef. Now, wait a minute, mister. Keep up it, Roddy. Go on. 
You take her of that size and the bad alibi. Lose the best part of them, if not all of them. Hurt them, cripple them. Maybe you lose some men and horses, too. Shouldn't concern you. That ought to concern you. You won't save any time in that maze. You might never reach water. The regular trails melt part too. Not any better than this and the long way round. But it's a trail that goes through. It's poor judgment to go wandering off into the Badlands without even knowing if there's a way through. What is it? You trying to pick a fight? I'm only trying to tell you you're making a bad mistake. Mister, we don't need your advice. There's bad manners that come I'm in here. I'm not interested in manners. I'm interested in the beeves. I don't like to seem led into this kind of torture. Well, this hurts my worry. I'm the one who has to decide what to do with it. So let's get back to it. All right, then. I'm sorry for the rest of you. Roddy, keep moving. Back to work. I just don't figure it's time for anybody to think. You know, them beeves are mighty foot there already. Still a good ways to water. I've never seen any place as bad as this. Almost like some other world. Some dead place. See? You think maybe this fellow Ford might be right? Well, you heard what he said as well as I did. Who is he? You know him? I don't have heard of him often enough. He's busted a lot of drives. Mostly we're on the good night loving trail. I never heard anything bad about him. I never did about Mr. Faber, either. What's on at him? He's scared, for one thing. He's got a right to be. Well, then why don't he ask for some help? Why don't he take advice? Why don't you ask him? He's the boss. It'll warm you. Ought to have something in your stomach. Oh, thanks, Wish. Say, look, I didn't mean to jump at you today. Oh, that's all right. Everybody's kind of jumping. <coughs> you call that coffee? Well, go ahead and drink. It'll do you good. What you put in there? Just a tonic. Something for what ails you. What do you mean, what ails me? Well, something does. You sure ain't been yourself lately, biting everybody's head off. Maybe you're coming down with the ague, is what I think. Just keep you thinking of yourself. I'm all right. No, you ain't. And it's time you admitted it. Look, Miss Favor, you ain't alone here. You got friends. Nobody's fighting you, you know. You ought to take some advice. Look, you want to take over the job? Well, you ain't thinking very good. And the way things are going, ain't none of us, men or beasts, going to get out of these bad lands a lot.
Senor. I hear it. I told you we should not risk a fire. I told you I'm not hiding from anybody. Let him come. They have minor. They will shoot you in the back. Not with you facing Joe. Besides, only one. He's making too much noise. I've got a hunch who it is. Hello there. Come on in, Mr. Faber. Down, Mr. Faber. Copy? Ah, you got anything stronger? I have a bottle of tequila. Good, stronger the better. You look hot enough. <sighs> Thanks. That what you came for? Look, you think you could get my herd through the river? Now you got them deep in the mud pie. You want somebody to put you out? I'm asking you, do you think you could? How about losing some beef? You've cost two extra days already. You could do it. I could. All right, then do it. What do you mean? It's just what I said. Take him through to the river. All the way if you had to. I got a tenth coming. You can have a third of it. Half if you have to go all the way. Why can't you give it to one of your own men and save the money? It's a trail that's new to us. And it's a tough one. I never heard of a trail boss quitting in the middle of a drive. As long as he could sit a cell. Especially if he was in trouble. I'd like to know why. Just take him through. Well, what do you say? No. One more? No, I've made my year's wages already. What do you want, then? Nothing. I do it as a good turn for somebody I respected, but you couldn't pay me. I'm not asking you to do it for me. What about all the fine talk about the beef? You said those steers were your concern. Now you're asking me to pull you out. I'm offering a business proposition. And I'm refusing it. I thought there was something wrong with him. He's got a fever. Texas fever? Pox cholera? I don't know. It's strange. What is it, Mr. Fair? It's nothing to worry about. It's nothing catching. What's wrong? Come on, tell us, man. I... To hit in a war skull fracture. I warn it might bother me someday. Could mean brain fever, blindness, maybe worse. Anyway, a man can't push a trail hit with half a mind. How do you know that's what this is? It's like they told him. The headaches, everything blurry. It's hard to think. Could be just a bad fever. No, I can't take the chance it'll get worse. I need your help. I'll have to be boss and come to charge. All right. More, with you around, the man would accept me. But that's not the important thing. You've got to see a medical doctor. Yeah, maybe it'll help. Joey will take you into Weberville. There's a doctor there. When you get well, you can catch up. Say, Lord, do you think this is wise? Maybe not. You'll be going right to where they are. I got much better than waiting for them to catch me. But I must be with you. No. You take him into Webberly, never make it alone. And stay around, see if he gets well, or... Then you'll catch up. Do you think these men will accept you with loss? I've got to see to it that they will. By the way, thanks. Why? I'm doing it for the beeves. What are you doing up this hour? This ain't your watch. Well, if you're gonna be up for breakfast, you can give me a hand. 
What's going on here, Rob? Mr. Favor ain't back yet? No, it's almost morning. He ain't showed up yet. That ain't like him riding off like that. Well, he's probably out with a nighthawker. No, none of the nighthawkers have seen him all night. Well, that ain't like him. Then he wasn't himself. I didn't sing about this, but I think he's sick. Well, maybe he just went out to check the nighthawkers and got lost. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had an accident. He's out there hurt somewhere. Well, now, wait a minute. He's going off half cock. Rush out in these malapas in the dark, break a horse's leg, get ourselves... Wait a minute. I need a Nighthawker coming from that direction. Come on, men. Glad to see you up early. What are you doing here? How to wake everybody up. I want an early start. What are you talking about? Just as I'm saying. I'm taking over the herd. You know, where's Mr. Favor? He said to tell you, you better do as good a job of ramrodding for me as you did for him. And that goes for you, too, Pete. Nola's the name. I was going to fire you first thing. Until he told me he argued with him about going back and taking the regular trail. You better get ready to ride. You would, huh? Well, I tell you, you're going a little too fast for me. You better tell me where Mr. Favor is. Twenty miles on toward Ruddle. You trying to say Mr. Favor left us and turned the herd over to you? That's right. I don't believe that. Wait. He was sick, wasn't he? Yeah. He ain't sick. Sick with what? I don't know with what. But sick enough he had to get to the doctor pretty quick. That ain't like Mr. Haver. He didn't hold much with doctors. He never got so sick I couldn't fix him up with salts or paragoric or tonic or something. Yeah, I don't see like him to leave the herd. Yeah, without telling anybody. Maybe he thought he had something catching. But to turn the herd over to a home stranger. No, I don't savvy. I don't believe it. He'd have turned the herd over to me. Pete, maybe, but uh, what reason would he have to turn it over to you, huh? I guess it isn't enough for him because that's what he did. You want to see the papers he gave me? The transit orders, the bills of sale, all the rest? Yeah, I'd like to see him. You could have taken these papers off of him. There's a lot of money in being a trail boss. Not unless you get the cattle through. And that's what we have to do. Wait a minute, Cord. Mr. Piver didn't even like you. In fact, you came in here and insulted him, and now you're going to take the herd over? You're crazy, mister. You think fighting me is going to prove anything, even if you kick me? There's maybe forty, maybe fifty thousand dollars worth of beef out there. And somebody's got to take the responsibility of getting out of the death trap it's in and across a good many more miles the same to water. And more than that, over hundreds of miles more. For who knows what kind of country, what kind of weather. You want to accept that responsibility? Any of the rest of you? Well, Mr. Favor accepted it. That's why you took his orders, and that's why you'll take mine. Where's the cook? Right here. Feed everybody as fast as you can. I want to get up by first light. Your wagon in the lead. One thing, mister. Is he coming back? Is he going to be all right? I don't know. All right, move straight out and take the lead. Set the pace as fast as the terrain will allow. Do you mind telling us where we're going? I don't mind telling you, so long as it's understood I don't have to. I want my orders obeyed without argument and without question. You certainly got yourself deep into this mess than I expected. There are only two things to do. One is to move back to last water. That's two days. Long one. And three more dry after that. At least. It's only a day from water the way we're going now. It'll be the longest day you ever spent, especially the way you were going. There is one other way it'll only take two days, if we can get through. Yeah, and that's two more days without water. Four in all, a bad train. You all know what that means. Mr. Fave never had any trouble with that. And I don't expect to. You said if we get through. If we decide to go that way, we just have to get through. Well, when are you going to decide? I already have. We're not moving back. Save your water. All right, move out. Head for those peaks over there. I'll be there shortly to lead the way. Can't just go off and leave Mr. Favor. You want to go chasing in the web if you're looking for him? And leave these cattle to die of thirst? 
Let's wake him up. No, I don't want pushed off the background. Those two-year-olds have started it. All the few chuck wagon followers, others will fall in after them. That way, they're going to be all spread out. Let them be. Single file. I don't want them bunched in this step. Nobody but the wagon and Pete Nolan with me on point. Only three, maybe four, on drag. You figure the ones, Yates. The rest of you, including Swing, will ride flank, strung out with them, staggered on opposite sides. That's up to you to keep them moving while I find a way, understand? Yeah. All right, let's go. Thanks, sure. Making better time to do. Well, it's going good this way. Yeah, they know they're headed for water. Well, maybe. Who steers this way? No swing rider. Better lose a few spades riding to get hung up. Like you said, it's pretty good grass, plenty of room for them spread out. I figure it's gonna be too far, but the way you're making time, looks like you're gonna make it. We'll make it. Have you ever been over this way before? Not exactly, but I bet it there was. Well, did you go down to the river from there? I don't see how, because it sure looked rugged to me and dangerous. You afraid of a little danger? That would all depend on the danger. For instance, I've been thinking that wouldn't be Dragoon Crossing, would it? You've heard of it. Yeah, but they want to stay away from it. Said Bates' gang are holding it, demanding tribute for anybody tried to cross. Ten five cents a head for cattle. They asked me ten. Did you pay it? Would you? Well, that also would depend. On whether your men are willing to back you? Mine were. You had to fight. Didn't take a fight. And then. Had more men than this, had outnumbered. What about these men? Well, they'd have done it for Mr. Favor. I don't know about you. I tell you, I never would have believed it. You bet. You know, we came along with that stuff today. You gotta hand it to court. He sure knows his business, all right, now. Why don't you keep your ideas to yourself? Now, look, Roddy, I'm not saying no bad against Mr. Faber. He's a great boss, too. He's our boss. Remember that, will you? Well, of course. We're giving court his due, don't cost Mr. Faber nothing. Ain't no good saying he don't know his business. You're forgetting how court run him down. That's true, he did. Well, maybe he was right. I mean, Mr. Faber wasn't himself. He was sick and he made a mistake. Sure, anybody can make a mistake. What are you doing, sticking up for that Jasper? He's getting the herd to water. And he ain't so bad. Well, he ain't hard to get along with for a while. Sure, just till Mr. Faber gets back. How do you know he's gonna get back? How do you know Cord didn't do something with him? There's a lot of money in being a trail boss. Uh, Roddy, I don't think Cord's that kind. He wouldn't do that. You don't know that. No one around here knows that. Pete, what do you think? I'd say Cord's all right. If you're a good cow, man, that's for certain, so that makes him my kind of people. Sure settled a lot of doubt in my mind. But it ain't Cord I'm worried about. Then what? 
Tomorrow we're going down to the river over some of the roughest trail we've ever been over. But that ain't all. When we get there, it's Dragoon Cross. Whoa. That settles it. That means either pay or fight, and I'm not gonna fight for court. We'll let him graze here for a while in the morning. The grass is fresher, possibly even some moisture. Wishbone will lead out and let them fall in themselves, just like this morning. Only it's very important we keep them strung out, especially when they get the smell of water. You don't need to pretend you didn't hear me, Cord. I ain't gonna fight for you. That's so. That's right. You could have told us we're going to the Dragoon Cross, and you know what that means. Well, what would you have done? Gone back the other way? Well, I ain't gonna fight for you, mister. For ten cents ahead, that'll get to around $300. It'll have to come out of your wages. You think you can raise that much among you? Buy yourselves out of fight? We can do that, Rowdy. Maybe they won't even be there. Maybe they won't even be a fight at all. Maybe not, but they are. What would Mr. Favor have done? Well, there must be another cross somewhere. It's too late for the new note. You led us right into a trap. Anybody who doesn't want to go down to the river with me tomorrow, you can get out right now. Take your things and get out. That goes for all of you. But if you go, you don't come back. I think Mr. Faber would agree to that. If you stay, you can be prepared to do whatever has to be done. Oh, I meant to say good work day. All of you. Well, how am I gonna feed those night hawkers if somebody don't go relieve them? Senor. Mm. Mm. Are you all right? Mm. So. You are feeling much better. No, Senor? Must have been a nightmare. The medicine the doctor gave you is working fine. By tomorrow, you will feel much better. Medicine? Hmm. Not what you told us. It was not your head. It was a fever made your head hurt. Oh, a bad case. What? Nothing to worry about now. Well, I can get back to the well, Oh, two or three days, maybe. Better to rest first. Send your card, we'll take care of it. Yeah. All right, fix your thing out. All right, amigo? Yeah.
Yates, we're gonna have to watch him close today. We'll smell water. It may be a job to hold him in. Yates. I admire your loyalty to Mr. Faber. I expect the same loyalty from my own ramrod. But a drawer of only one first loyalty, that is to the job he's been busted with. Look, I don't need a lesson from you. You know, you'll make somebody a good ramrod. Maybe Mr. Faber, but not me. What's that mean? You're firing me? Not yet. I'll need you today. After that, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I'll quit first. That's the thing about you I don't like. Now, you better ride up ahead with Nolan and see the trail we have to take. You'll be better prepared to handle it. through single file to shove themselves off the cliff. Yeah, and with the smell of water coming up to them, they're really going to be pushing in crowd. Towards right, we'll have to hold them back and let a few down at a time. Some trail boss leading us to this. Well, he thinks it can be done. We'll see about that. Just rest easy, mister, and you'll be all right. All by the name of Clark with your outfit. All right. I guess he must hear you wouldn't mind saying no. And that's the good news I'm after. Yeah. Be one of the Bates gang. And you hear what he said about good news? That must mean Corp's mixed up with him, working for him or something. Now, oh, Roddy, why not? It fits. Look, he takes Mr. Favor's herd over and leads us down here to get wiped out. It's as simple as that. Oh, Roddy, I don't believe that. Corp's not that kind. I don't know why you can't see that. Or maybe I do see. Maybe it's because Mr. Favor trusts Cord with the herd instead of you. Is that it? Oh, well, I've walked away from Cord long enough. <laughs> When you get to the top of the cliff, pull aside and help to turn him in. Nolan or Yates will be there to show you. Look like one of them coming now. I want to talk to you, mister. It'll have to wait. Right now. Roddy, they're getting the water smell. They're getting hard to hold. That's all right. Let them go. Better to lose them that way into the Bates gang. I don't intend to lose them anyway. Oh, that's right. You don't want to lose them, do you? At least not your share of them. Roddy, what are you accusing him of? I'm accusing him of being in partnership with Bates, that's what. Fine. That's nonsense. Yates, I'm ordering you to get back to work. I've never had to give an order twice. Not until we know who's given the orders here. I've never had hit a man to make my decision stick. Now, I'm not going to stop now. You have as long as it takes you to get in the saddle to get back to work or get out. Look out, it's starting to run! They're heading for the cliff! Swept him right off of that cliff. Now, that ain't a man who's thinking only of the money they'll bring. Get it! All right, we can't hold him here. Let's start him down. You stay at the top and turn him. Right! Down the 
help Ford, will you? Try. Quit. Get your man up here. We'll need every man to keep him in line. Can't hold them here long. They sell out water. Yes. Yeah. We're down now. You want all you can go. Are you firing me? You said you quit first. There's more in my hair than it is yours, Mister. You didn't care much about him back there. Yeah, well, I ain't quitting. You gonna take my orders? That's right. All right. Here's my first. You pick out the six men least able to fight. The seven of you stay here and hold back that herd. Stay here. The rest of you go down to the river with me. Wait. Look. It's Mister Favor. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You don't look all right, though. What's wrong? I'm glad you're back. Roddy takes cords and cahoots with AIDS boys. That's so. You all right? Enough to be here. Uh, it wasn't a thought. No. Good news. I got some bad news, too, though. Joe's dead. Bait boys. Billy Joe. As a matter of fact, the bait boys are waiting to ambush you in that big clump of sycamores down by the river right now. Guess I'll go down. You men stay here. You don't think you're going down there alone, do you? It's a private fight. That's all right in a fair fight, but this sure ain't. You got a whole gang waiting for you down there. Besides, it is my business. They probably wouldn't even be here if I hadn't talked too much. It's me they want. They let the rest of you through. We'll all go down there together. The deal was I was to take the herd to the river or all way if you didn't show up. I hadn't handed you back your beeves yet. I hate to take my own orders, but Mr. Cord is still in charge till we get to the river. Give me 10 minutes. <laughs> What's all this about? The court came through earlier this year with a herd. He refused to pay tribute to the Bates boys. I didn't give him a fight then because he had a full crew. When he came back through Weberville, he only had one man with him, so they pushed him into a fight. Orville Bates died, and so the brother ever since have had only one thing in mind, to get cord. Pete, you take Quince and Scarlet. Give him some coverage over that way. Right. Hey, wait a minute, boss. Uh, let me do all you. All right.
first one I pull this trigger. You might get me. I promise you not before I get clear right between the eyes. All right, put down your guns. Corey, turn around. Back up. Back up, Corey. Turned off their guns. I am done, all of you. Billy Joe, tell him to lay him down like I say. Lay him down! No. Get out! Get on your horses and move out! Thanks. Probably a lot of things I should say, Mr. Cord. Well, um, I'll just say this. Any time uh, Mr. Favor decides to quit, I'd sure try and sign on with you. I'm used to an old ramrod. No, I, I'd write anywhere you put me. Well, I might just do that myself. That's right. Thanks, boys. Remember. you'd expect after all they've been through. Guess you could say the same about you. I guess you could. Oh, where'll I find you? Find me? For the money of you. For the last two days, I should pay you. What a crazy business. 
just don't make sense. I'm gonna quit it go back east one of these days, I swear. Let me know when you do. Hmm? I'd like to hire your crew, every man. You're even better sense than I figured to have. They're good. I don't know where they stay with you. Matter of fact, I don't either. I'll be going. Well, thanks. I got them already there. Good news. In the second place, when I'm wrong, I'm always the first to admit it. Well, you ain't ever admitted it yet. And I'm telling you, I just can't do it. And you are going to round them up. I can't round them up. And even if I could round them up, I'm not going to round them up. They ain't available for round up, and you know that as well as I do. Oh, get moving, Roddy. Look, Mr. Favor, you're not talking about cattle now. You're talking about men. Sometimes I think you've gotten so hard, you're forgetting that. Well, in any case, as long as you are working for me, your job. I know my job, but the men need relaxing. They've been three months without it. Now, you expect me to ride through town like Paul Revere and waking them up? Oh, I'm not expecting nothing from you. I am flat out informing you. You have got a cattle drive to move day after tomorrow, and you and your men are going to be in condition to do it. Well, in my judgment. Your judgment? Since when in the ever-loving did you get judgment? A man has got a big herd for us to move, and you're going to walk up to him and say, hey, looky, uh, we're tired? In this business, you move cattle when the man wants to move. Oh, I ain't gonna be responsible. Well, you have just been itching for a set, too, ain't you? I could smell it way back at Brazos. Well, I am not gonna oblige you today. Today, I am gonna go sign with a man, and I am gonna deliver that herd on schedule. Well, give an inch, will you? Of course I will. Only when I have to. Well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to this time. You can get yourself another ramrod. I quit. Again? No, I quit. Ah, uh, you don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You can't really quit. You can never make it on your own. In the first place, uh, how could you ever find a ramrod as good as yourself, huh? Well, that would be hard. If I'm listening to you talk, I'll probably find a better one. Uh... What I heard didn't mean that I was the cause of trouble. No, a gentleman was willing to do business with me is never any trouble. No, it was just a summer storm we had to pass through. Then you'll be ready to leave on time. That's right. Hi, Lord. Well, who's missing? Longo, Parker, and Rowdy. Last was seen of Longo and Parker, they were chasing a couple of twins out in the prairie. Nobody knows where Rowdy is. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I know it's been a long, hard ride back here to Yellow Fork, but Mr. Kurt Matheson here in town has got 3,000 head he wants started day after tomorrow. I've agreed to move them. I know I'm just as tired as you. I need the day off in the worst way. But this is a good herd. Is there anybody here that thinks he can't make it? Fine, fine, you're all good man. And one last thing, um, we'll be having a new ramrod on this drive. Who's that, Mr. Faber? Oh, a Quince. What? Now you. Ramrod? Why not? Well, I don't know why not. I just never gave it any thought before. Come on, come on, think about it. Never thought I'd see the day I'd take orders. Are you sure you want me? That's right, sure do. Do the best I can for you, Mr. Faber. Good enough. Thank you, Mr. Quince. We'll be pulling out day after tomorrow, come sun up. Yes, sir. Mr. Quince. Good. This is the part I like about it. What happened? 
between you and Roddy? Oh, not much. A little misunderstanding about the men needing a rest, I guess. Now I had to remind him uh, what business he was in. So you fired him? Oh. He sort of quit. How about you and me going to have a drink? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thanks a lot. I'll do you a lot of good. I, I said no, thank you. Do you know a man named Gil Faber? Down there. The one drinking doubles. Mr. Faber? Yeah. I'm George Lockwood, and this is Jim Trainer, one of my hands. Gentlemen. I know you just got off a drive, Mr. Faber, but uh, I was kind of hoping I could turn you around and take a herd for me. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Well, that'd be a sizable commission, Mr. Faber. This herd's uh, beautiful and prime, over 3,300 head. Yeah, they're all beautiful and they're ready for market. Oh, like I said, I'm really sorry, but I just signed up this morning to go back with the Matheson herd. Oh, well, that's too bad. You know anybody, Mr. Faber? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Might try a fella named uh, Roddy Yates. Wasn't he with you at one time? Mm hmm. He decided to branch out on his own just this morning, as a matter of fact. I'm sure he's still here in Yellow Fork, but I couldn't say exactly where. Well, we can find him if we have to, Mr. Lockwood. You say this would be his first time on his own? Well, it was a fine ramrod. Well, that's not quite what I asked, Mr. Favor. Yes, it would be his first time on his own, and he is a fine ramrod. Well, I'm sure he was, Mr. Favor, but. Uh... Being a good trail boss is a different thing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let me put it to you this way. If it were your herd, Mr. Favor, would you hire him to move it for you? Yes, sir. Yes, I would. Mr. Yates is ambitious, hardworking, and reliable. That I can guarantee. As to his luck, of course, I can't guarantee that. Might be good, might be bad for you. But I can promise you, you'll get a fair shake for your money. Can he handle men? Oh, he can be as hard and tough as anybody when he has to. Good. I need a man that's tough. Yates. Rowdy Yates. Wake up. Wake up, Yates. I have to talk to you. It's business, Yates. Uh, did I do something wrong? Well, not that I know of. I'm here to talk business with you, cattle business. Look here, mister, I ain't in the cattle business. I'm in the out-of-work business. I hate cattle, I hate trails, and I hate people. If I ain't done nothing wrong, there's nothing I hate more than being waked up. Then you're not looking for a job? Of course I'm not looking for a job. I'm a very wealthy man, you can see by looking at this. I see. <laughs> All right. It's just that I've got a herd to move, and I need a trail boss. I have to be loading an Aveline in about two weeks. Trail boss? An Aveline? I'm a dancer. Uh, well, uh, I've got a loading day, but no way of moving the herd. I just was told yesterday. I know you haven't been out on your own before, but, well, I'm in a pickle. You'd have to start from scratch. You even hire your own crew. Yeah, good, good. Um... Uh, you, uh, honestly think you can handle a job like this? Yeah, nothing I'd rather do. Mind if I, uh, ask you something personal? Um, uh, what's your name, sir? Lockwood. Ah, uh, well, Mr. Lockwood, I know what you're gonna ask, and the answer is no. No, I don't wear this nightshirt on the trail. I just bought this to go along with renting this bridal suite so that I'd have the best night's sleep a man ever had. Oh. You can find a lot of men in this area who do this job, but none of them as well as me. Because I can't afford not to do it perfect. Well, all right. We'll give it a try. By the way, how'd you get on to me? Uh, oh, you were recommended by a fellow named uh, Gil Favor. Favor. Hey, you want to make some money? Come on now, old buddy. You need the money. Uh, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's just me. Come on now. Come on, you need the money. They're hiring men for a cattle ride over at the saloon. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on, these guys are on a toot. They just come off a cattle drive. 
You need the money. You're just flat broke. Come on, no, no, come on. No, 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 Get right up here. No. Attaboy. Oh. That feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Boy, I ain't had a... I ain't had a nice sleep like that in a long time. <laughs> sure do thank you, Luke. <laughs> yeah? Well, a guy by the name of, uh, Yates is hiring for a drive to Abilene. Yates? Ra uh, ra uh, ra Rowdy Yates. Oh, well, it could be. You know him? Well, he, he used to, uh... Here, hold on to that. Let's go. He used to be a ramrod for the old paper for a long time. I don't know what it, when, when, when it was. Broke, broke him up. Morning, Mr. Lockwood. A dollar a day, payable in Abilene. Yes, sir. Sounds fine with me. Okay. We'll meet right out in front same time tomorrow. Yes, sir. Uh, how much experience you had? Well, I've been on uh, eight drives. I've covered about 3,000 miles. Uh, two of them I acted as a ramrod. Ramrod? Yeah, that's right. How come you're not working now? Well, I'm a, I'm a single man. When I work, I work. When I play, I play. You always look for a job with uh, no shave like that? You just waked up. <laughs> Not if I can help it. Yeah, well, you look honest. I'll give you a try. That'll be two dollars a day and 10% uh, of my percent. Um, <clears throat> ramrod? Yeah, ramrod. Hmm. Congratulations, Wade. Oh, thank, thank you, Mr. Lockwood. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you know each other? Weed's one of the best men around. Well, how come you didn't tell me that? I didn't want to prejudice you. Uh, next, uh, how much experience you had? Oh, ten drives anyway. We well, I'll tell you. Uh, a dollar a day, payable in Abilene. Huh. You coming with us, Luke? Just real sure. That guy will hire anybody. All you gotta do is walk in front of him and you got a job. Paul, oh, will you get out of here? Uh, we. This will be his first time out of this trail, boss. Keep an eye on him for me, will you? <clears throat> yes, sir. He didn't believe me when I said the men were tuckered out, so I quit. Why the smile? You want me to be honest, don't you? Yeah, that's all right. Well, I ran into a couple of your men the other day, and they was telling me as to how they get a couple of extra days off just by crying on your shoulder a little bit. Well, I'd take that as a compliment if I was you. <laughs> well, anyway, here's to a new beginning. Sure, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Guess we better get back to hiring. Still six men shy. Yep. Uh, didn't think it'd be this tough getting the herd together. Gil Favor never seemed to have too much problem. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Yates, there's one thing that Mr. Favor has that you don't. Yeah? Wishbone. Wishbone. <laughs> you may just be 1,000% correct, we. So, uh, uh, we came to see him. I see. You object? Well, you know I was never one for slavery. You don't need my permission to talk to him or uh, offer him another job. That is why you're here, isn't it? Well, Roddy, well, 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 good to see you, boy. Good to see you. Hey, meet my ramrod weed here. Hi. Uh, well, you're sure coming up in the world, aren't you? Yeah. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. You see, I got my own herd now, my own destination, and a uh, ramrod here. I need a cook. Now, uh, I can pay you the same as you're getting here, only with a bigger bonus at the end of the drive. Maybe you'll think it over, huh? Bigger bonus at the end of the drive. <laughs> Come on, Weed. Nice to meet you, Mr. Favor. 
Isn't that nice? I'd sure like to help him out. That is, if I could. That'd be up to you, Wish. Well, why not? You'd like to see him get a leg up the ladder of fortune, wouldn't you? So would I. If I could help him, I think I ought to. Kind of owed to him, you might say. Oh, I understand. It's only a matter of weeks. We'd be right back. Look, and... you don't have to make excuses to me. But we're going to give him a leg up on a ladder of fortune, Mr. Favor. <laughs> Set your watch by Gil Favor. He's due in the six, two days ahead of us. Well, we'll be there on time, too, Mr. Lockwood. The railroad told me Favor's never yet cost his owner a train idle penalty. Well, just when will our pens be ready? On the eighth at noon. Mr. Lockwood, uh, what would you say if we beat the Gil Favor herd in and get there on the fifth? Well, now, there's not much point in discussing it, is there? Favor's got a smaller, faster herd, and he'll have a two-day start. I didn't say it would be easy. The way the market's going, you could be talking about thousands of dollars. That's no joking matter, Mr. Yates. Yeah. Well, why don't you just inform the railroad that we'll be there on the 5th? Right, Weed? Yep. You're the boss, Mr. Yates. That's right. OK, Weed, let's shake him up, because we got a new brand of cattle we're pushing. What kind's that? The racing cows. past that pretty grazing land, we gotta keep pressing. Oh, I'm pressing, Mr. Yates. Yeah, looks like we've made about four miles, huh? Yeah, at least. Good man, Weed. Good herding. We'll start out with eight night riders, and then we'll uh, cut down to four later on. Cut back to four? That's playing a little thin, isn't it, Roddy? Thought I'd ride on up and try a little of Wishbone's famous chow. 32 miles for Wishbone stew? It isn't that great, Mr. Lockwood. Well, to be honest about it, Roddy, I, I was worried you might be pushing too hard. Look, uh, back on your ranch, you're the boss of things, but out here, I'm running it. All right, Roddy. But pushing back to four night riders. Look, we started out short-handed. Now, the first day's drive is always double. Has to shake the cattle down, get them used to their new surroundings. Now, this tires the cattle, it also tires the drovers. Now, in my judgment, four men on night herd is enough. I don't agree. That's why you're riding back to your ranch. He's right, Mr. Lockwood. You don't belong out here. That's my brand on that herd. Yes, sir. But he's droving them. Well, maybe some other time, Wishbone. Listen. 
Your favor outfits around 14 miles out in front of us. Now, in case you haven't heard, I plan on overtaking him, beating him in. Now, I figure we can pass him, maybe in Duncan Canyon come sunup. Now, the way we can do this is if we take a wedge of riders and move them in right next to Favor's herd and just gently ease them to one side. If those riders stay there, they can help our herd slide right on through. Rowdy, can I speak to you a minute? Uh, later, Wish. Please. Now, look, Rowdy, what you're thinking about is dangerous enough, even if Mr. Favor knew about it, but to spring it on him. Oh, no. Now, look, I'm not telling you what to do, but I think you ought to give him a chance to set himself. My beef's with him, not with you. Now, look, I joined this outfit to help you, not to cause... Stick your cooking, will you, Wish? I will not. Now, look here, Rowdy. Look here, Wishbone. As long as I'm ramrodding this outfit, you refer to the trail boss as mister. Is that clear? Oh, boy. That's clear enough. Some friend you turned out to be, Mr. Yates. Sneaky little son of a gun. Now, I bet he's figuring on closing up on us to have us do his scouting and his trail breaking for him. I heard he was short handed. I gotta give it to him, though. Smart way of saving manpower. Yeah, could be. You know, I think we ought to go and visit him tonight. Bet the kid's having all kinds of problems. Just might appreciate a helping hand. Well, I don't know, Mr. Favor. The way I heard it, his mat is pretty deep. Ah, don't you believe it. One thing I know is my boy Rowdy Yates. Yeah, by golly, we will go over there tonight. Just socialize. See how the kid's making out. Howdy, fellas. How's it going? Oh, fine, fine. Oh. Well, we noticed your dust. Saw the way you was closing in on us. Uh, figured you was trying to save manpower. And it occurred to us that uh, about this time you might need a helping hand, huh? No. Nope. Oh, everything's all right. Mm. Just fine, thank you. Just great. Oh, good, good. See, I, uh, I plan on beating you in. You plan on beating me in? Mm-hmm. And just how do you plan to beat me in? Well, by watching every stick and stone, driving faster, better, and smoother than you. Oh, I see. See, I got that herd of my own now. That you do, Mr. Yates. You most certainly do. You'll be eating my dust. Yeah. Yeah, that might be true, too. Well, um, you take care, fella. Take care. All right. I uh, hope you know what you're doing, Rowdy. <laughs> Prince! Snake in the grass. What did I say about him just before we come over here? Sneaky, dirty little son of a gun. My exact words, right? Right, oh, do I know him? I had to take his fuzzy little neck and wring it out. Eat his dust. Let's get out of here. I don't know. 
than me. I don't think I'd have taken that from him, Mr. Favor, even though he was a friend of mine. Don't you worry. That dumb kid ain't getting by with nothing. Forget it. We're not racing anyways. Well, you know they're already making bets back there. I said you? no. Don't call the squall at me about it. All right, all right. I said to forget it. Look, he ain't got a rotten chance of beating us. He's still behind us, ain't he? Yeah, all we gotta do is spread out the herd real wide. Ain't nothing he can do about passing us. <laughs> the way I understand it, though, you want that herd pushed just as fast as you can, is that right? Yeah, sure. Well, that makes a race out of it. Huh? All right, everybody up. Come on, move it out. No sleep tonight. Shake it up. What's up? I know that man. He's just as sneaky as I am. Come morning, he'll spread that herd out all over the place, and we won't have a chance. We'll be finished. Now, here's what I want you to do. You get your men on flank, and when we make contact, I'll fall back, and you take over his lead. Well, who do you want riding anchor? No anchor. Without one? That's right, without one. We'll move out easy, smooth, and with confidence. Now, come on. Oh. All right, you heard what he said. Come on, boys. There ain't gonna be no anchor. We're just driving today. Let's wrap it up. His herd is headed this way, headed for the canyon. Hey, you know, our stock's a lot closer. You want to try to block him off, Mr. Favor? No, just keep him tight. I'd rather he got past us and get us all killed. Come on, ladies, and follow Rowdy Yates to glory. <laughs> Come, let's go.
Luke! Fall back and take anchor. Right! Steady. Keep his head up. Man trouble! Keep his head up. Steady, boy. Well, I had my doubts, but I'm glad I didn't say nothing. I'm just glad it's over. Hadn't been for old Luke getting hurt, everything would have worked out perfect, though. I never seen such pretty droving in my life. Maybe, but he's crazy, that Yates. Well, he's crazy as a bed bug. Uh, Luke, there's a town called Diablo a few miles back. I'll put you in the supply wagon, take you in. All right. Uh, a beautiful job, Weed. We're ahead of Mr. Favor and in the canyon, too. Yep, we'll be on the fifth, just like I said. You're a lucky man, Mr. Yates. Well, maybe so, but it seemed like a smart maneuver. Very stupid. In the first place, you shouldn't have gone up in that canyon. In the second place, there's that business that happened with Luke this morning. Yeah, we had a man down. Well, Mr. Faber was closer to him than you was. Why didn't you let him pick him up? He was our man. Oh, you just can't miss a mistake, that's all. Now look here, Weed. If you're looking for a showdown, you're not gonna get one. You're hired to move cattle. As long as you're working for me, that's what you're gonna do. Yes, sir. Did you scout that canyon? I did. What'd you find? That canyon split in two. There's an upper fork. It's as dry as a roadrunner's crawl. There's a lower fork. It's longer, but there's a cold pond up the end of it. How much longer? Eight hours, ten hours of water in the stock. Yeah, if you think Gil Favor's gonna sit around behind us waiting for us to get through that canyon. No, 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 he'll... He'll probably skirt east, set his own pace, maybe even travel at night. We'll lose that advantage. What's your opinion? My opinion is that my opinion ain't worth too much around I'm here. I'm asking you for it. Why aren't you prodding me for it? You're gonna get it. Mr. Yates, you ain't driving these men and these cattle hard for a better price. You only got one thing interested in you right now, and that's whether or not you're a better man than Gil Favor. Well, one man's been hurt because of that already. I say quit this foolishness. Quit this race. That's your honest opinion. That's it.
And one of you's just as bad as the other. No, you're worse, because you're trying to take out on him what you think of your own darn self. Why, he's just as like you as your own mirror image. That ever occurred to you? Must be why you hired him. You just had to find some way to hit out. Hit. <laughs> Stop by Mr. Favor's camp on the way to Diablo and tell him the whole thing's off. Well, I know uh, we'll all sleep better for it tonight. Luke, have a good trip. Don't get too many ups and downs. Yeah, you funny. Favors fire. We're right on in there, and you can rest a while. I'll tell them we're calling the race off. We're calling this race off? You mean you? Yeah, I've been watching you. I got a broken leg, a broken arm, maybe a couple of busted ribs. And it's killing you worse than it's hurting me. Now, you listen to me. I break legs all the time. Arms, too. I, don't, I ain't saying I like it that way. Don't call this race off on account of me. You want to beat him to that railhead, you get at it. Well, I'm glad you don't hold it against me. Well, I've heard a lot about this Gil Favor. Anybody that's supposed to be that good, don't just sit too good with me, so you whip him for me. Biggest favor you could do me. You whip him real good. Just be right. How much, Doc? Well, it'll be fifteen dollars, Mr. Yates. Fifteen. An arm and a leg and one rib. Two ribs. All right. Thank you. some telegrams and wait for the answers, all right? Mr. Favor, I just saw the Lockwood herd heading in an upper fork. You say upper fork? That's right, the upper fork. Looks like nothing is going to stop Mr. Yates, except Mr. Yates himself. I'm betting anything. He's going to get too smart for himself. Yeah, sure, it's shorter. He's so dry to choke a lizard. When those cows can't breathe, they're going to run. Maybe they'll even stand beat him. Hey, he can't do it without rain. That fool is going to be taking a hundred to one shot. Quince, you section the herd in two. We're gonna go through Lower Fork. We're gonna go through faster than it's ever been done before. All right. Come on. Come on. Decreases. 
Another five minutes, I'll push on. You give it an hour and bring the second section in. Mighty pretty country, ain't it? Yeah, down here in the canyon. I'm afraid our uh, boy has bit off more than he can chew in his part of it, though. Still too fast. Get some men up in front. Sam! Frank! Frank! Tom! Frank! We need more help. We need a medicine man. We're getting pressure from the rear. Too much dust. Mill him, mill him. Don't let him stampede. The more we mill him, the more dust we get. Hold him. I said hold him. They're going too fast. We can't hold them. Turn them. They're breaking loose. They're close to stampede. Say a prayer, then. I've been. I've been. Time though, Weed, and you'll be a hero. Well, I got no objections, but I'd, I'd rather be lucky like you. <laughs> lucky, huh? Eh? I spent all night in Diablo, sending and receiving these, trying to locate a rainstorm. Finally found one moving west, from Harrison to Saragossa. Weatherman here at Topeka said it'll be here this morning. Here it is. I sure wish you'd tell us before you turn it up for pork. I almost quit you. I didn't want another one of your arguments. Besides, you're just a ramrod. You ain't supposed to know what's going on at my level. That is, until you get a herd of your own. Everything's confirmed. Your check has been deposited. Thanks again. Nice herd. Well, all I did is drive him, Mr. Morgan. The Lockwood's cattle, he raised them. Well, he should be a very happy man. Now, let me tell you, he is. Now, Mr. Yates, I know of another herd in South Dakota. The owner's over at the hotel now trying to find a trail boss. I recommended you. Well, that's, that's very nice of you. Much obliged. Any time, Mr. Yates. Any time. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Yates? Hmm? Are you the man that wired me in Diablo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Been trying to reach you, but you left Diablo. Right after I wired you about that storm, it petered itself out in Highland Springs. Uh, sorry you never got that water you counted on. That storm uh, didn't reach the upper fork? Don't see how it could. Well, and what rain did? That, sir, I couldn't tell you. Woo! Look at there! There, have some of this, boys. Forget all that beer. Whoa, well, this is the kind of a party I like. Hey, did you see that? Hey! I'm drinking this all myself, because I tell you, I ain't had nothing like this. Oh, this is too good. I don't want any of that. I sure like to have a beer. 
You'll have sarsaparilla. Here, take two. They're free. It's on Mr. Lockwood. Uh, uh, hey, here comes Mr. Yates, as they call him out in the prairie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come over here and have a beer, boy. Uh, you could look like you're enjoying it a little bit more. This is on Mr. Lockwood. Isn't costing us a red cent, boy. That's right. Hey, by the way, there was a fella in here from South Dakota asking for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got a herd of 4,000 head up in the Black Hills and wanted me to run it for him. Oh, well. Mr. Favor! Here come them tall, sore, tired, dusty losers. Hey! <laughs> well, I got him to you. Piss in like you said you would, and he ate your dust like you said you would. Congratulations. And you want to come over for a drink, you're welcome. Yeah, I think I will go over and have a chat with him. Come on, Mushy. Oh, uh, if you're thinking of taking that South Dakota herd, I'm not going to be able to come along. Mushy and me need a long rest. <laughs> come on, Mushy. Mr. Quinn. Uh, me. <clears throat> yeah, me too. You too, what weed? Well, you know me, Rowdy. I'm kind of a rolling stone. I, I had in my mind to go out to California. I, I think I just might do that. Swell. Well, excuse me. I'm going to go over and make my peace with Quince now. cooking this time out. Fine, just fine. You know, we never ate better. Oh? Uh -huh. Why, well, you old sugar saver, believe me, it was choking bad, Wish. Good to have you back. Why, you two. Well, no wonder I had you all spoiled right. That's right, here. Let me have some of that. This one's empty. There you are. <laughs> well, is it fun, isn't it? Give me some more. Uh, Mr. Favor, uh, I'd uh, like to say something to you. I'm glad you could join us. That, uh, well, me beating you in like this, uh, strictly a fluke. Oh. Just, just the biggest fluke you ever saw. Fluke? You did a good job of drove. A little pair of scam at times, of course, but good. No. Uh, <laughs> no, you see, I gambled everything on a rainstorm. I telegraphed all over. Finally found one, but it fizzled out before I reached the upper fork there. I looked in on some other rain I never knew anything about. Well, that's mighty nice of you to up and say it. Uh, I gotta admit, we sort of hated coming in second to you, especially after we broke our backs trying so hard. Uh, some fellow up there in North Dakota wants me to take over his herd. She has to go on my own again. Hey, fine, fine. Well, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm ready for it. It's nonsense. What are you talking about? You did a good job for Lockwood. Oh. No, you might think so, but I don't. I don't think the rest of my men did either. No, I might have a rough time getting the crew together. I don't think I'm seasoned enough for it yet. But learning every inch of the way. I, uh, it's all right. I wouldn't mind coming back to work for you, you know. I'd surely like that, Mr. Yates, but uh, I already got a ramrod. Oh, not ramrod, no. Just, just playing working. Well, that'd be fine, Mr. Yates, but you'd still have to talk to Quince. Oh, no. I won't do it. Not again, Mr. Favor. I never did like that doggone job in the first place. I hated it. Belongs to Rowdy there. Why, you horse headed. And I hope you take it back. You see, Mr. Rowdy? Uh, uh, just plain Rowdy will do. Playing rowdy. <laughs> Let's get rid of Hey, hey, we got some bottles here. I want to get rid of this kind of stuff. You know, I think I can learn to like this.
Moving, moving, though they're disapproving, keep them doors. 